of the Halifax explosion and how it devastated about 50% of the black community uh, at the time and, and it became as we know Africville and it was left unattended, uh, left to be a garbage dump for the city and you know for many years between, uh, it wasn't a clean up until the 1980s. So you know we want to be able to tell these stories about Canada, its role um, in the, uh, the uh, uh, immigration of, of the black community uh, and the kinds of contributions that our community has made. This is uh, interesting and uh, definitely the Canadian history, it is our story, history. It is our history. And uh, it is very important to have represented in this history the, the contribution of black Canadians mm -hmm. and many others. So I would like to ask you, why did you come up? I mean, how did everything start? How did you come up with that? Well, uh, I'm a community activist. I've been working as a community organizer for over 40 years out of Montreal. And in my travels, I met Dr. Dorothy Williams. And we discovered we had a passion for, you know, history and, and, and black history in particular. 
So it took me about five or six years with a pancake breakfast at the uh, at a local you know spot called the Green Spot to convince her that this knowledge, this information, how are you? Right, needed to be in school. Good, good. I'm just and uh, so right now in the middle of uh, filming something. That she but, would uh, provide the content, are you, are you on the and way? I would provide the sort of the, the packaging, as you will. So oh, you are. Okay, it's okay, a collaboration okay. between the so two. Yeah, just so you can enjoy yourself there. We started there. back uh, in 2010. Just, uh, whenever you can, you can just so come into the hotel. It's been 12 years now that we've been doing. You know that airplane, yes, right? You know, putting this together. And no, so we are now in schools in PEI, New I Brunswick, can send you the address. Nova Scotia, Quebec, Ontario. I think we're in one school in Alberta and uh, yeah, one in, that, you know that um, in Vancouver. It's near that. And we really, yeah, yeah. And we are right near, near recently it. got a request from the black community yes, yes, in it's like, not, not of it's all like that. Kind of so near it, we look to go. We look to go there. Right at the so we're trying to find, you know, uh, history so that local history so that it can relate to the population. Okay, and that's what we've done here. Right, thanks. Excellent. So does it mean are you working with the, the school board, uh, the school boards? Yes, we are working with school boards. We train teachers because we can't expect people to know this information. You know, I mean, they weren't taught it either. So, so the teacher's text we go through, when you open it up, it's like a lesson plan, all made, like a lesson plan made right for you. So we have a small little poem, all right? And then we have a description of the person and, and why we, and why this, all right, I'll try it again, sorry. And why we've done it. And then we have a comprehension page at the elementary, high school, and university level. So, so it's being used in universities, high schools, and so on. So, as well, you know, if I remember from my younger days, my fascination with baseball and hockey cards, we have created little cards about each and every one of the characters that are in there. So there's 26. And, uh, and if I remember well, my mother used to think that I knew more about my baseball cards than I knew about my homework. So um, I'm using these as a way for kids to be able to absorb the information. I knew everything about all the baseball players on my cards, the hockey players. So, you know, I learned a lot by osmosis, if you will, you know, not even thinking I was deliberately learning. But kids really, you know, really enjoy these these cards and we work with them to do that. We have all kinds of games inside. We have crossword puzzles. We have word search, you know, of all the names of the characters in there. We have the matching games. We match the person with the with the profession or match the person with where they came from or where they did the activity. As well as we have a huge poster, which is a, a timeline that shows from 1628 to I think into the middle of the 80s, when, um, you know, and we, so we start with Olivier Lejeune, who was the, not only the first slave, but the first student in Canada, because um, he was adopted by a local priest, and he, um, he started to teach him, you know, the language as well as indoctrinate him into the Catholic religion. So he was essentially the first student in Canada as well. Uh, right through to, and ironically, our last character is a teacher, Dr. De Dr. Melville Deport, who was a teacher for 70 years at McGill University. He started the entomology department there, which is the classification of insects and parasites and so on. Um, he developed the department, right? He got his PhD there and so on. And then he was all right, lent he, he put, uh, he was lent to the rest of Canada to put its system in place. Then he was lent to Europe, for Europe to be able to copy their system. And I think there's a plaque to him on Parliament Hill that recognizes him as a person of historical significance. Wow, this is uh, so much knowledge and um, for me it's also the I've heard of the kids. And uh, today to be beside you and you telling me how everything started, it is such a great honor. So uh, for those who would like to uh, have the kids, and how, how can they get that? Well, all they got to do is go to www.blackbiblio, and that's B-L-A-C-B-I-B-L-I-O, no K in black, it's just B-L-A-C. Uh, go to our website. All of the materials.
material is laid out there for you to see. You can order it directly from there. It gets shipped to you within days. Um, and um, we have other online presses. When you buy one of the kits, you get access to an online game that we have. with kind of a matching game where you match characters, the images come up, and then there's a puzzle. You look, not only do you learn the history, there's a puzzle behind it. Um, of those of you who are my age, you might remember the concentration game back in the day. So, you know, it's the same kind of concept. As well, we have an app on black history, all right, which, um, again, can be purchased, you know, separately. But it's something that you can, it's like a calendar. Every day on your phone, you get a kind of this day in, in history and an accomplishment of, of somebody from the Canadian black community. And even sometimes we have tough references to you know, other black communities from around the world in terms of their independence days, you know, freedom from colonialism, or days in which colonial powers, for instance, abolished slavery, and so on. So you can get a whole bunch of information as well once you access our website and purchase some of the material. This is uh, wonderful. So I got myself some cards today, <laughs> and I would like to let you know that they are on sale, but there's going to be a draw as well. You can put right. your name um, where you see Dr. Williams' booth, and uh, you can win one of those cards. Absolutely. You can win a pack of cards if you put your name in the draw. Absolutely. So, um, Mr. Garner, I think what I would like to ask you at this time, we still have uh, some people telling, saying that black, why do we celebrate Black History Month? What is your answer to that? Well, it's important for people to know and understand um, that you've made a contribution. Um, when we, if a child is in school and we talk about what their legacies are, so we talk about different communities. We talk about the Greek community of, you know, developing democracy. We talk about this community doing that, that community doing that. So what's the legacy for, black, for the black community? The only thing people know about our community is slavery. And what kind of foundation is that to be? What is there to be proud of as, as, as a young, impressionable student? So what we, what we hope to do is give them an alternative to be able to see that, yes, we did do things. We did contribute. All right, we are part of, you know, of, of, of this nation. For instance, Doc, um, there's a gentleman in there by the name of Mifflin Gibbs. Um, he should be considered a father of confederation because he, created, at a Western conference to vote to join the United States, he changed the minds of the people there and made them stay in Canada, or convinced them to stay in Canada. If not, our Canada would look very different today uh, west of the Ontario border would now be America. So our, you know, our Canada would be a, almost half the country that we know is a, a, you know, of today. So it's those kinds of contributions that I think people need to know and understand, you know? And, um, and we, in the black community, we have a saying that if I can see it, I can be it. Absolutely. All right? So Absolutely. if you don't have any models, uh, any role models, if you don't have any people who have aspired and achieved to show you that you can aspire and achieve as well, um, then if you don't have those, then you grow up to think that I, you know, there's nothing I can do, that this is somebody else's world and I can't participate. And we want particularly, you know, black children, brown children, other people of color to know and understand that you do have a role, all right? There has been a role paved by the community already, all right? And you need to know who they are and you need to continue, continue their contribution because that's what they would want you to do. Absolutely right, I agree. And especially um, writing, it is for us to tell our story as well, yes. I think, because our story, it is our identity, it is part of our heritage as well. So um, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Gardner. Well. Uh, at this time, I would like to ask the audience if you have any questions uh, towards uh, what we've been talking about today, a journey of discovery of the black uh, Canadian history. What, what do you think about uh, this initiative and also uh, how would you like to contribute to that? Yes, I have a question. Of course. I'm sorry.
sorry, I just came in at the last minute. It's okay. I, 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 but I am very, I am a writer and researcher on black history in mm -hmm. the capacity that I can be. And I know that in Nova Scotia, Canada, that there is um, some uh, uh, touristic things that people can visit. I was wondering if, um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the rest of your talk, but I would like to know if there would be an appropriate place for a museum for Canadian black history somewhere in Canada. Where do you think the best place would be? Well, we, we have, uh, we, there are a number of places already that are happening. For instance, there is a museum in Dresden, Ontario, um, and actually that's where all the is for people to know. There is an African-Canadian museum in Nova Scotia, in Halifax. Um, we've recently been, uh, there's been a creation in Montreal, something called Afro Museum, all right, who, um, you know, we work in some collaboration with. Actually, the exhibition right now is all on Dr. Dorothy Williams and what she's contributed to to this kit and uh, the books that she's written. Um, and I believe there's something in Toronto, but I can't, I, I can't remember the name right now. But um, we, we hope to, you know, to uh, inspire people to create some kind of a national, you know, recognition, uh, you know, where there would be a national museum or at least, um, you know, some acknowledgement, you know, on the part of the Canadian government, not just in celebrating Black History Month, but creating archives, creating, you know, stories, showing, portraying, you know, black images and the contributions of, of the black community throughout the history of Canada. So we're, we're hopeful about that. We're working as other people are as well to try to create those kind of initiatives. We're just hoping that the government will get its collective mind together and uh, make that a possibility. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I, I have, does anyone else have a question? Yeah, uh, you have another question. I, I, I do. Um, actually, I, I was wondering if you thought that there was um, enough publicity and promotion of the new $10 bill with the legendary Rosa Parks equivalent in Canada. Uh, the lady, uh, Viola Davis, right? Is this correct? Viola Desmond. The, the Viola Desmond who uh, refused to give up her seat in a movie theater. This is not talked about enough. Every time I would show this $10 bill to my friends and acquaintances at yeah, the no largest idea. grocery store in the pier, no, nobody knew anything of what I was talking about. But you see, this is, uh, this is the issue. For the history, the history of the black, indigenous, and other peoples of color in this country have not been known. These are the histories that you have not been told. They have not been taught in schools. I came through the school system here in Canada, never had a word about the contributions of any of those communities. And so it's not, uh, it's not unreasonable that people don't know this information and are unfamiliar. What many people have been trying to do across the country with the government is bring these kinds of stories to their attention so they can be properly reflected. So there are things that if you're a stamp collector, there are a number of stamps that are now out about, you know, about that. Um, about the first black post, the postman and so on, who actually had to fool them into hiring them because he didn't have a black sounding name. So he sent his application in, wow. all right? They gave him the job, then he showed up and they thought, they, they thought that he was mistaken because they didn't know that he was black when he was hired. Oh, so, no. you know, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get educators, we're trying to get those people who develop curriculums at the provincial levels to be able to include these stories. Because if you can talk about John A. McDonald being a father of confederation, why not Mifflin Gibbs, all right? Why can't you do a, an essay on him about what he contributed to making what we know of and see as Canada today? Or, and there are many other stories like that. There are stories like Harriet Tubman, for instance, who in uh, St. Catharines, Ontario, there's a school and a little museum to her and so on. People don't know that she was in Canada for 15 years conducting the Underground Railroad. We just think of her as, you know, as um, an, an American figure, but mm. St. Catharines, Ontario was significant in terms of being able for her to create a base from which she could go back and forth into the United States and free uh, and free fugitive slaves. So we need to know that we've, we've had that kind of role. Or talk about, you know, uh, Richard Pierpoint, 
who was uh, well known as Captain Dick during, uh, I think during the war, uh, during the, the last war that we had with the United States to prevent the United States from taking over Canada. Uh, the Battle of Queenston Heights was one of the turning battles, and he was significant in his role, and he was celebrated for you know celebrated for that. Or talk about William Hall, who had been one of the first three recipients in Canada of the Victoria Cross during the Crimean War. Now, people don't associate the black community with the Crimean War at all, but he won the Victoria Cross, which is the highest honor that the British government can bestow upon a military person. And of course, at the time, we were part, we were Dominion of Canada, a part of the Commonwealth, a part of the, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, of the of, of the British, you know, run ter you know, ter territories. So that was the highest, you know, medal they, they could bestow upon him for his bravery. So people need to know that we've done those things. They just think that we've been here since the wave of immigration starting in the 70s, and that's not the case at all. Okay. Thank you. I was uh, I didn't know of those most of those historic figures, and I did, of course, hear about Harriet Tubman, but I didn't know she had spent 15 years in Canada. Do you think um, I have um, at least one more, but possibly two questions for you? If it is okay, they're very specific. Um, I, I I don't. Uh, do you know about Elijah McCoy and his 48 inventions from Ontario, Canada, that Elijah McCoy is the reason we have air conditioners? Well, he's the Can we say actually, some hello actually, to Elijah wow. McCoy? Actually, he's the reason that you have an oil system in your car. Wow, I didn't know wow. that. But that That's a genius. And, 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 and the, the brakes the on the train. Expression, the, the original yes. expression, the real McCoy, is about Elijah McCoy. Yes. All right, and because this he invented he invented that that piece of machinery that sped up um, locomotive travel by eight, you know, eighty percent. Wow, eighty percent, eight times faster. Eight times made, faster, which made it all right, which made it viable for both passengers and goods to be shipped across the country by train. Because before he invented this thing that you which is what you call the oil drip can, which we know as the oil system in our cars now, you had to get out every quarter mile and oil the engine. So imagine how, so each train had an engineer, a brakeman, and an oilman, all right? So imagine how long it took you to, to cross, uh, you know, a certain amount of territory. When he invented the oil drip can, the engineers on the trains were the proudest of having it, and they coined the expression, I have the real McCoy. More people need to know, especially about this real McCoy. And another quick question, if I may, and thank you for your patience, and I don't know if other people, I mean, I want to also hand over them, I can give an opportunity right. to other people. Um, Okay, um, the last thing is, I'm a very avid movie watcher. Yes. And when I watch Netflix, I see a lot more black content, mostly from the States, and I'm glad, because I'd like to know more. But do you think that there's enough black Canadian content on Netflix? Well, I don't know about on, on Netflix, and that's, that's, that's sometimes that's a commercial interest rather than anything else, but there are num numerous uh, black filmmakers who are producing more and more material, all right? Uh, more and more black actors, for instance. There was just a recent article about um, uh, more and more black Canadian uh, well, and Canadian actors participating in the the Marvel comic universe, the MCU. There are a lot more Canadians in roles on those movies. And then, um, and then finally, we're seeing the emergence of more, like I said, black you know, actors and filmmakers, and eventually we'll get caught up, but we're one-tenth the size of the you know, United States, so, you know. Thank you. Uh, perhaps we'll, we'll talk later, so I give chance to other authors to be interviewed, but thank you very much, sir. You're very welcome.